Chapter 2, Setup Tutorial. Position the airflow control unit onto the IV pole using the roller pull clamp. Pay attention to ensure the control unit is plugged into an improved electrical outlet and the pole clamp is fully tightened. Hang the IV bag of desired irrigation fluid. The indicated irrigation fluids for use with the airflow control unit are normal saline and lactated ringer solution. Once positioned on the pole and plugged into an approved electrical outlet, press the power button and turn on the control unit. Select Setup Tutorial. Cassette Prep. Open and prepare the Intelligent Digital Cassette and Drainage Collection Bag in a sterile manner. The Intelligent Digital Cassette includes irrigation tubing, drainage tubing, and IV spike. To do this, create a sterile field and place the contents of the Intelligent Digital Cassette and Drainage Collection Bag packaging onto the sterile field. After this occurs, connect the drainage collection bag to the drainage line. Ensure that the irrigation and drainage tubing are connected and the roller clamps are open. This will ensure a complete prime of the airflow system. Remember to strictly maintain sterile conditions when handling and connecting irrigation and drainage lines. Drainage Collection System Select the orientation of the drainage collection system in relation to the patient. Locate the pin at the area of connection between the drainage collection system and the airflow control unit. Pull the pin backwards to release the locked drainage collection system. Pulling the pin will release the lock and allow the drainage collection system to be moved from left to right. Set the drainage collection system to the desired side and release the pin. You will hear the drainage collection system lock into place. Attach the drainage bag onto the hanger and lock it into place by closing the locking lever. Select your desired measuring scale. You can choose between millimeters of mercury or centimeters of water based on facility or physician preference. To do so, turn the black knob at the top of the drainage collection system until your desired measuring scale is selected. Now that you have attached and locked the drainage bag into place, it is time to adjust the drainage bag height. Per physician orders, adjust the height of the drainage bag on the drainage collection system by squeezing the hand release lever. Squeezing the lever will allow you to move the drainage collection bag up and down to your desired bag height. You will note that the exact height of the drainage bag will appear in the window display identified by two arrows on the drainage collection system. Using the IV spike, remove the protective sterile cover and spike the irrigation bag, filling the drip chamber. Press cassette prepped in the screen to continue. Insert the intelligent digital cassette. Now that we have this completed, we are ready to attach the intelligent digital cassette onto the airflow control unit. To start the process of attaching the intelligent digital cassette onto the control unit, open the cassette door. The control unit will now prompt you to attach the cassette, close the cassette lever, and then close the cassette door. To complete this sequence, first insert the cassette. This is done by first inserting the bottom and then the top of the cassette. Ensure the cassette is pushed down and firmly seated. Once you have attached the cassette, close the cassette lever. This will lock the cassette into place. The cassette lever should easily go down. If excessive resistance is felt, open the cassette lever, reinsert the cassette, and try again. Close the cassette door as illustrated on the control unit touchscreen. With this sequence complete, press the continue button on the screen. This tells the control unit that you are done performing these items. Calibrating. It is now time to calibrate the cassette. Calibrating the cassette ensures the transducers are reading the accurate ICP and considers the atmospheric pressure in the room. To accomplish this, turn the cassette knob to the zero position, delineated by the zero icon, and wait for the control unit to calibrate. 
When calibration is complete, the screen will confirm calibration success. Once you see this message, turn the cassette knob back to the starting position labeled ICP. When returning the cassette knob back to the starting position, pay special attention to turn the cassette knob all the way clockwise until it will not turn anymore. You will be prompted to do this every 24 hours. This ensures the ICP will remain accurate throughout treatment. Priming. Now it is time to prime the system. Automatic priming will occur after pressing the prime button and will take approximately 45 seconds. You are done priming when you observe irrigation fluid in the drainage bag and the loading bar on the screen is complete. Priming is done to create a fluid-filled system so that when you connect the tubing to the catheter, there is minimal need to open the system during operation. When priming is complete, check the tubing for significant air bubbles. If there are no bubbles noted, clamp off the roller clamps on the irrigation and draining tubing. This will make sure that when you connect the tubing to the catheter, it does not lose its prime. If the user feels additional priming is required, select Manual Prime and press and hold the Manual Prime button on the screen. This will allow you to continue to prime the system. Once you have completed additional priming, press the Continue button on the screen. To prevent residual fluid from being accounted for as output during patient treatment, pour the residual prime fluid into the large portion of the drainage collection bag. Now that the system is primed, let's focus on placing the irrigation tubing into the bubble sensor. When placing the irrigation tubing into the sensor, make sure the tubing is fully inserted. We are placing the tubing into the bubble sensor to ensure that no sizable air bubbles are introduced into the system via the IV bag. Once you have completed this step, press the continue button on the screen. It is time to select the volume of the IV bag being used for irrigation fluid. You can select 500 milliliters, one liter, or another volume to be entered. You will be notified when 80% of the irrigation fluid has been irrigated. Once the fluid volume is selected and confirmed, press the continue button on the screen. ICP settings. Next, select your ICP measurement. You can choose between millimeters of mercury or centimeters of water based on facility or physician preference. Once selected, confirm you have chosen the correct option and press the yes button on the screen. Procedure, treatment settings. There are three procedure options to choose from. Active fluid exchange, drain only, and monitor only. This allows you to deliver the optimal treatment to your critically ill patient. By selecting your treatment procedure, the screen will display the necessary treatment settings. The procedure and treatment settings will be ordered by the physician. We are now ready to adjust the airflow treatment settings. Adjust the high and low ICP values using the up and down arrows on the touch screen. We are setting these parameters as the control unit will operate between the two selected ICP values. As long as your patient's ICP falls between the selected high and low parameters, the control unit will continue to deliver the desired treatment to the patient. If the ICP rises to exceed the high alarm value, irrigation will stop. And if the ICP falls below the low ICP alarm value, irrigation and drainage will stop. The purpose of this feature is to ensure the treatment is taking place within the pre-specified parameters. And if it's not, the control unit will adjust treatment to adapt to the clinical situation. We now need to tell the control unit how we are going to treat the patient. First, select your irrigation rate per physician orders. The amount of irrigation to be delivered can vary given the patient's clinical condition. You can expect the physician to order an irrigation rate within the range of 3 milliliters an hour to 180 milliliters an hour. 
Next, select the treat above value per physician orders. This setting is critically important as the control unit will only irrigate and drain when the patient's ICP is above the selected value. When the patient's ICP is at or below the selected value, irrigation and drainage will stop. Only monitoring will occur. The treat above value can be adjusted between negative 99 and 99. Now that you have input the treatment parameters into the control unit, be sure to confirm you have selected the correct settings. If the settings are correct, press the apply button on the screen. Thank you for watching the Aeroflow System educational training videos. If you have additional questions, please reference the Aeroflow instructions for use, download the Eris Academy app, or contact your Eris sales professional.